Hello, my name is Gloria Lafont. I'm with Action Marketing. We are a digital marketing agency that specializes in working with distributors to help them stand out, attract clients, and increase repeat business using proven marketing strategies. And I want to thank you for downloading our authority website checklist. This is the same framework that we use in our business when we are designing a new website for a distributor. That way we make sure that we cover all of the areas, all of the things that a website has to include to work well for maximum conversions. Most people, when they think about, oh, I want to have a new website. So the first thing they think is this, the looks. I want my website to look awesome. And start looking at graphics, start looking at competitors' website that you like and I want this here, and I want something like this, and I want something like that. All of that is good to, for inspiration. Now, if you're focusing on the looks first, that's like if you are going to build a house and you start by going out and buying the paint and the window treatments. It's very possible that they're not gonna fit anywhere. You're gonna waste time and money doing that. So that's not the place to start. The looks is not the place to start. The place to start is figuring out first how many rooms you want the house to have, where are those rooms going to be located, how many bathrooms, what's the height of the ceiling. All of those foundational things come first. And with the website, it's the same way. And many times, most designers start with the look of the website. And it's a huge waste of time and that's usually when website projects take months to deliver. I've never taken months to deliver a, a website project because I follow a framework and I start with a blueprint. Okay, now let's go through the checklist. It covers everything from top to bottom, everything that you have to consider when you are building your website. Now, you, does it mean that you have to do everything exactly the way it's here? Because you have to think about what you want and what works for you. But this is a good reference of all the pieces that make a website work really well. So you should have gotten this along with the checklist that is easier to fill in and print. And hopefully you have it in your hands right now. Okay, first encryption. You want to make sure that you have an SSL certificate installed. It just shows an HTTPS URL, it ends in an S. You probably know that by now. Your branding elements, you want to have a high resolution logo, a trendy looking design, consistent look and feel through all the pages. You want to have original, relevant quality graphics and avoid industry stock. Industry gives you tons of stock images. You don't want to use that, you know, especially if they have them in their templates. Somebody else is going to also have it. So you're going to have your own. You also want to have a marketing message that is focused on your client. Moving on to the layout. Make sure it's mobile responsive, has minimal navigation, links and, bottom and buttons are clearly visible, social icons are at the bottom. This is important because you don't want the social icons at the top and then people click on them and leave your website and never come back. So you want that at the bottom. Next is the SEO elements. You want to have keywords in all your page titles and, and the content. Let's take a quick look at the keywords and where to find them. One way of looking at the keywords is if you type something on your, on your browser bar, it's gonna open up a window and show you different uh, options. Usually these are things that people type. So Google's trying to guess that you want something that somebody else already typed. Now, if you type something, a lot of times they're gonna, it's gonna pick whatever you typed. So you wanna take that into consideration. But this is one way of looking at keywords that you think you may wanna use. Also, of course, there is Google AdWords. They have a keyword planner where you can have more detailed information about the keywords, the, the volume, 
how many people are looking and a lot more detail. And you're going to put that, those keywords in your uh, title and description tags. This is what shows up on Google when on the searches, you want to have your keywords in there. Okay, back to the checklist and let's take a look at the rest of the SEO elements. You want to make sure you have your business name, address and phone written exactly the same way on your website. Now today that's not so hard because usually you, you put your, your address in one place and it's going to be populated in other places, but sometimes you have to fill it out in different places. You want to make sure it's the same, the phone, all of that. Also in online directories, you want to make sure that everything is updated. You want to have your images optimized. Sometimes the images are too big and you need to reduce them to the size of the space that, that is ideal for your particular uh, platform. If it's too huge, it takes too long to load, takes too much space on your server, and it's a number of things that are really very negative. So you, this, this is very important. Okay, so you also want to have relevant content in your internal pages, and the content has to have at least 600 worth in length. Otherwise, it's too shallow, doesn't really doesn't really get found by Google. Next is a fast loading time is important for SEO and also important so your visitors won't leave waiting for your site to load. The next thing is you want to have visible button. People expect to be guided through when you land on a website you want to know where you're supposed to go. Next is your home page elements. You want to have a clear benefit statement above default. You also want to have your specialties. You know, you can have, you don't have to have this divided in three columns. It doesn't have to be one row, three columns. It could be two. You could do this any way you want. You can have a video. You can not have a video. But in this location, you want to have your services. Like, if, for example, if you do trade shows, you will have one of these boxes would be trade shows. The other one would be safety programs. The other one would be awards and recognition. You can also, if you're doing products, you want to pick your top categories of products and you will have that here. You will have a nice image with the product there instead of having just a bunch of products that are randomly selected because you don't want, you don't want random on your website. You want to know what's on your website. I've seen websites, especially the industry ones that have 10 cents pens on the homepage. Why would you want anyone to call you to buy pens that are 10 cents? You know, please. And maybe they do call you and that's why. <laughs> okay, so the point is that you want to have a, a space on your website that describes all your specialties. Okay, the next thing is that you want to have a product search button that is visible and at the top. This is of course if you want to stimulate people looking for, for products and your clients visit your website and when they come to your website, they want to go search for products. So you make it very easy for them. You may also have it somewhere else. Like if you have in, in one of the other boxes is promotional products like this one right here has a box right here. If you click here, you go to the promotional products page. In this case, you have it in two places. You have it. You have the online catalog right there at the top, and then you have a, a box that is going to go on the catalog as well, because people want to be able to go where they want to go quickly. The next thing is your trust icons. What are trust icons? Trust icons are memberships like your ASI or or PPAI, your chamber or an industry association of an industry that you market to, anything like that. You could also have clients, logos, testimonials. You want to have that. It, it shows that you are here to stay, that you're not a fly by night. And believe me, there are tons of fly by nights. So these kinds of things make people trust you and, and add credibility. Same thing with the testimonials. You want to have at least a couple on your homepage. The next thing to go on your homepage is a lead magnet, if you have one. This could be a guide 
to provide promotional products or to set up a trade show or a checklist, even a printed catalog. I have to say that I tested different things and I did get leads from all of my lead magnets that I used. The one that surprised me the most was the printed catalog. Back in the day, there was a green products catalog and that was the one that was most popular. I thought it was ridiculous that people would want me to send them a printed green catalog. <laughs> so you never know what's going to work. So if you do have one, you would put the lead magnet right on your homepage. Another important item is a warranty. You are selling products and people want to know that, that you are going to stand behind the products and you want to tell people that you are because in the end, you are going to stand behind the products and it's a, tr a major trust factor. So it is an important one. Then of course, your contact info, you want it all at the, at the footer. People expect to find that at the footer. And then again, in the footer, you want to have your social media icons at the bottom. Also at the footer, you want the main navigation links. Again, that's where people expect to find the links to the main, the main most important pages. That's where they're going to be looking. So you want to have those there. And then the additional pages that you also want are, but you know, the about us, ordering information. If you have that, you think that's important to you project section, if you have, if you're going to showcase products, your specialty pages, like we said before, and the, your privacy policy. Then your conversion element, things that are going to help people take the next step. You want to have your phone number at the top, right? Across all of the pages, because that's where people are going to expect to find it. Let's talk about the live chat. If you cannot man the live chat during business hours, then you should probably not have it. But you want to look towards that. You want to go in that direction. Think about how can I have a live chat when you are on a website and you want to know something. You go to the live chat. You all look for it, right? You want an immediate answer. You want to also have a contact form. You can have the form, the complete form. I prefer to have the form or just have a, a call to action button with a that takes people to your contact us page and there's the form. You want to have a couple of qualifying questions on your form. Uh, you, don't want to have, you don't want people to fill out too many details. You know, sometimes people, you know, how much do you want to pay per item? And how much do you want to, uh, how much is your budget? And it, somebody that's brand new, is not going to give you all that information, but they will answer basic questions that are going to get the conversation started. Not too many so that people don't feel that they have to answer too many questions to get to you, but just a few. When is your event or do you have a date, for example? Are you looking for ideas plus the products or are you looking for the lowest price? And then you know if this is a worthwhile lead or not. Okay, so that concludes our walkthrough. Now, if you're looking for help with the implementation I would love to hear from you. The next step would be to schedule a web presence assessment and a strategy session. We offer a few of these a month every, uh, for free. This is something that we normally charge for. You won't find this offer anywhere because we don't advertise it. It's only for those who are considering hiring us. And this helps us, both you and us, decide if we are actually going to be a good fit. What this consists of is we start with an assessment, with an online presence assessment that includes your online positioning on your rankings and also your social media presence and opportunities that might be there for improvement. After we've done that uh, assessment, we schedule a strategy session. We have usually sent you a questionnaire so that we can learn about your goals and where you are in your business and what you're trying to accomplish. And then in that strategy session, we present you with a game plan, which is an action plan for the first 90 days on those areas that are most critical that need to be addressed to begin with.
Usually there are a lot of foundational things that need to be put in place to get off on the right foot and get the most benefit from all this work. So if you're interested in that, there's going to be a link along with this video. And I would love the opportunity to discuss what we can do for your business and for you to become one of our happy clients. And with that, I want to thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I know your time is valuable and I really appreciate you spending it listening to this. And I hope it was very useful. I hope you got some really good nuggets of information and that you implement some of what we discussed today. I would love to hear your thoughts. So thanks again. Stay in touch and take action.